So I had a, a fellow reach out to me and ask if I could build him a table out of some walnut that he had slabbed up from a tree that fell in his yard. And I said, of course, I could do that. And I've never done that before. So this was a learning experience for me from beginning to end. So each slab would get loaded up on my workbench and I would lay, lay out my cuts. I was able to get two boards out of each slab and they were roughly about 10 inches wide. Uh, every slab had a crack right down the middle, which was fortunate that it was in the middle so that I was able to maximize how much wood came out of each one. And as you can see here, I'm putting these shims in as I cut because the blade was just not cutting all the way through. It was about a quarter of an inch. And as each one of these was going to get cut again, I wasn't too concerned about how they were turning out as I cut them. I think all in all, this probably took me between six and eight hours uh, to get them all cut out. Um, mostly because, it, again, this was a learning experience for me. And there was a, a few curves that came my way that I had to overcome. Once I had all my pieces cut up, it was time to start planing them down. And each board had its own little unique characteristic that needed to get planed out. If it was a little twist, if it was a little bow, whatever it might be, I would take it and I would hot glue it onto this piece of melamine that I had and then shim the voids where it wasn't touching so that it wouldn't get pressed down. And then I would just run it through the planer until that side was flat. So I just want to note that the reason why I ended up using melamine instead of what most people would use like a piece of plywood was because I was hot gluing that board right down to it and I didn't want it to keep peeling off strips of plywood possibly and that melamine would just separate right from the hot glue when I would try to pull it apart. And so it was perfect for this application. Uh, I don't know if I would use it again unless I was doing something similar to this where I was using lots of pieces of wood. And once all my pieces were flat on one side, I went through and I just planed them all down to the same thickness. Once all my pieces were milled to thickness, it was time to get that straight edge put on each piece. So I made this straight edge jig specifically for all these pieces. Uh, these were pretty wide boards. And you could just see here that I'm cutting all my pieces and getting ready to make that tabletop. Once I had all my tabletop pieces cut, I started cutting out the pieces for the table base. Once all my pieces were cut for the tabletop, I prepped them to glue together. I just used biscuits to join my boards together and this is to help with alignment. This being the biggest tabletop that I've glued it to date in my space, it was a little bit of a challenge because I'm in a tight space, but uh, I, was, I was able to figure it out. And uh, once I got it in clamps, I knew that I was gonna leave it in clamps till I was ready to work on it. So just something to think about if you're doing something this big, is make sure you have the space to, to store it. I just leaned it up against my tools and that's where it stayed until I was ready to work on it again. So once the table was in clamps and off the workbench, it was time to start working on the table base pieces. So here we are, we're getting ready to laminate boards together that will end up being base pieces. So one of my favorite parts about building is having my kids come out and help me with little parts of the process. Uh, I think it helps them in problem solving and seeing that you can take simple materials and build whatever it is that you're wanting to build. I also just enjoy it because they're my children and it's time that I get to spend with them out in the shop. And that little dude is a tough little man. I bet those pieces once we had clamps on them weighed as much as he did and he lifted them like a champ every time. A little tip if you're going to lamb up pieces like this, uh, make sure that you have a good amount of glue on the pieces. 
But also when you're going to clamp them, you're going to want to clamp them together top and bottom first so that when you're attaching the clamps to squeeze them together, they don't slip up and down. Uh, I figured that out pretty quick as we were doing this and just adding that little clamp on top and bottom kept them from slipping too much. So once I had those pieces ready to be planed down, I had to figure out a way to run them through my planer because I don't own a jointer. And uh, I came up with this simple jig. I just screwed down some boards on that millimeter piece and I would get them squared up and shim them in there tight. I would then take that sled and I'd run it through the planer again until the one side was square and flat. Once one side was square and flat, I was able to take them out of the sled and run them through again on the other side until they were flat on both sides. Uh, the only thing I would definitely recommend is to double check that all your pieces end up being the same thickness. Once I had all the pieces milled up, it was time to start cutting pieces for the legs. So you can't see it, it's out of frame, but I do have a stop block so that each one of these pieces got cut to the same length. So once I had all my pieces cut out, it'd be time to figure out where those half lap joints are going to intersect. So to do this, I took the top and bottom pieces and I attached them to my workbench and then I glued blocks where they would need to meet on them and put the pieces in there and marked them. Once I had them marked, I set up my dado stack inside my table saw to remove that material faster. If you were to do this yourself and don't have a dado stack or the capacity to run a dado stack, note that you could do this with just a single blade on a normal table saw and it would just take a little bit longer. So once my half lap joints were cut, it was time to cut the actual top and bottoms of the base to size. Again, you can't see it because it's uh, off screen, but I do have a stop block. So all these ended up being the exact size that I need instead of marking each one out. This was for a client and as part of the design that they asked for, they wanted all the corners rounded. And to make sure that they were all consistent, I used my combination square to lay out where I wanted those rounds to meet. And then I used a tape roll to just connect those lines. Super basic, super simple way. I know that there's tools out there that do it for you, but this is just the way that I came up with. And once I had those laid out, I took them back over to the miter saw and I cut off a huge chunk of it so that when I would take it to the disc sander, I wasn't sanding it all off. Once I was at the disc sander, I just lightly and slowly rounded those together until they were smooth and uh, whatever I didn't get out, I knew I'd get out when I used my palm sander to sand everything down later. Once I had those done, I had a little bit more half laps that I needed to cut. This was for the top and bottom brace to attach the two legs together. So simple, quick, simple, fast process. A little tip that I used during this build to keep my pieces separated was using different colored tape. So you'll notice throughout that some pieces have blue tape and some pieces have yellow tape. And that was just to make sure that I didn't glue the wrong pieces together. One of the small little details was these feet that I just glued on before I started sanding. And I cut these pretty close. So when I would sand everything together, it wasn't going to take very much to sand them smooth. And when I sanded these pieces, I wanted to sand everything before I glued it together because it'd be hard to get in some of those nook and crannies. So 
I won't bore you with that part. So these are the stretcher pieces that will connect the legs together. Just cutting the half laps into those. So to connect the cross pieces to the top and bottom, I'm going to be using biscuits. So I'm just here laying them out. So this will help me be able to align everything when I go to glue it together. Also, when you apply glue inside the biscuit joint and put the biscuit in, the biscuit will swell and make that joint a little bit tighter. I got my two younger children to come out and help me again during this glue up process. I gave the one the task of spreading it out and the other one the task of putting in the biscuits. It might be a small task and it might be just a little thing, but uh, the more confidence they get in doing small stuff like this, the more confidence they get in helping me build things and again building their own pieces. This is an extra step that I took to continue to secure the top and the bottom of the base to the legs and that was to add a dowel. So you'll just see that I'm drilling down at an angle and pounding in that dowel and then I just take and saw them down flush and then I'll go through and sand them later. Once I got these pieces glued in, it was time to get back on the tabletop. Loading that up on the workbench was a beast. Once it was loaded up, I just cut it down to size. Once it was cut down to size, I would take the router and put a round over on it. Went back after and I sanded through the grits all the way through. So now that the top's ready, I'm ready to attach the top to the base. So what I'm doing is I'm just laying out some spots for some figure eight clips. I use a Forstner bit for the main part of it. Go through, pilot hole where my screw's gonna be, clean up the corners, and then screw in those figure eight clips. I ended up using the figure eight clips instead of Z clips because I didn't want anyone to be able to see them from the side. So the only way you'd see these once the top was attached is if you put your head all the way under the table. Once I had those all in, I wanted to put some leveling feet inside the base so that uh, wherever they move this table, they can make sure that it's level. So I use some threaded inserts and then some feet that can just thread up and down. Uh, they're pretty easy to adjust and it makes it 10 times easier for someone to be able to level out the table in their home. customer just wanted a poly finish so just loading up my spray gun and doing layers on the base and on the top side note if you're putting poly on any project make sure that you're sanding in between coats 
to give the next coat purchase. I really liked using this poly on this. It brought the top and the base to life and brought out that figure and made it look amazing. And after the poly dried, I took it inside and I attached the base to the top just by using some screws. That was the build. Thank you guys for watching.